Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, Power to Come On Out, the podcast where we practice facts over feelings. Thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Before we jump in, we're running close to 6,000 subs. Come on, help us get there. Share the story. Share the videos. Get the word out. We appreciate you. Topic of this rant is USC coach Lindsey Gottlieb sings the praise of Caitlin Clark. And why is this? Well, Juju Watkins just got a mega shoe deal from Nike. One that might be larger than Caitlin Clark's shoe deal. I, I don't know the numbers, but she is a sophomore in college who now just got a Nike shoe deal. So clearly there are Nike um, values, Juju Watkins and her talent and her skill and her ability, and they have rewarded her with a shoe deal. Congratulations to Juju Watkins. Well earned. 27, 28 points per game as a freshman. Earned. <clears throat> now you are the face of college women's basketball. So it's time to carry the torch. All that said, <clears throat> there's going to be a lot more eyes on Juju Watkins than even there was last year, probably by a long, a, a large margin. So you have to be prepared for what comes with that. Who else better to guide you in what comes with the attention in, in college women's basketball than Caitlin Clark? Lindsey Gottlieb, the head coach of USC, spoke about Caitlin Clark, Iowa, and asking for their guidance. So we'll give you a clip here of what was said about Caitlin Clark and how she reacted to the situation for Juju Watkins. Take a listen. Coach, how do you help her navigate what will inevitably be a, a season with the spotlight just squarely on her? Yeah. Well, in terms of Juju, the basketball player, I've, I've always felt like one of my biggest um, goals was to almost stay out of the way and let her step into her greatness. Um, and when she did that her freshman year, now with it comes a ton of attention. So. Um, you know, our administration has reached out to Iowa quite a bit and said, okay, tell us what we need to know. You know, some of the things that Caitlin dealt with. I reached out to Caitlin and say, how can I help Juju with this? I feel like it's my job to, to make sure that I'm using all the resources. I've tapped into my NBA people saying, okay, when you have someone, you know, who's going to get this much attention, how do you, um, you know, A, keep them safe, but B, allow them to embrace everything that's going on. So those are the resources that I've tried to use. And then it's always just keeping that relationship with her, trying to make sure she's comfortable with me to say when she needs something or when, when something isn't going right. But we're, we're all looking forward to the attention and making sure that we're ready to, to, to embrace it. What was the most valuable thing that Caitlin told you about how to help Juju deal with the incredible pressure that we, we saw her deal with firsthand? Yeah. Well, first of all, she was so gracious. She, she literally took my phone and said, here's my number you know, reach out, call me, see how I can help. But essentially she said I had that level of attention for, you know, she said like a year and a half, and she said Juju's going to have it for three years. Um, so, you know, obviously try to let her get through the WNBA season, take a break, and then, you know, really ask her specifically about what she would do the same, what she would do differently. Um, and we, we, we've talked with their program about everything from security to autographs to, you know, making sure we, we maximize this time, but also, you know, keep, keep – So I think you got a good understanding of the type of person and the type of character that Caitlin Clark is. Caitlin Clark is gracious. She's giving, she's loving, and she's happy to help. She has no need to help Juju Watkins. There's no benefit to her to help Juju Watkins. And you know what the difference is between Caitlin Clark and so many other people? Caitlin Clark didn't tell you this. The UFC, the USC women's basketball head coach told you this. Kaylin Clark doesn't spread when she does nice things. She doesn't tell the world because she doesn't need the attention for when she does good things and when she does gracious things. She, someone else decided to, to spill that information. And of course, naturally, it's a great look for Kaylin Clark because it shows that she is a giving person and that she does care about the people that come after her in college basketball because she understands and appreciates the fact that, look, there might be someone that comes after her who breaks all her records. It's a possibility. 
Is it a probability? Probably not. But there's a d- distinct possibility that someone could come along and break her records. All that said, I don't think Juju Watkins will be there for three more years. I think Juju Watkins is there for two more years. And if she's old enough to, to declare for the WNBA draft, she will be out the door. Okay. So that's just my feeling. But if she is there for three more years, hey, I don't blame her either because she'll probably get paid a whole lot more money to be in college. Again, all that said, we look at a situation in which <clears throat> Kaylin Clark comes into the WNBA and instead of getting that type of guidance, well wishes, appreciation, All the adjectives that you can think of to describe someone good and someone who's going to bring value to your sport, to your league, she got the exact opposite. She got the nasty comments, the the digs, the, the incessant rages of jealousy, whereas she's sitting here saying, whatever I can do to help Juju get through this, it's tough because it's real easy to say that Juju was great as a freshman. She was. Caitlin Clark averaged 26 or 27 a game as a freshman, okay? But she didn't nearly have this type of attention because no one had attention in women's college basketball when she was a freshman. Juju Watkins' attention in large part came because of the attention given to Caitlin Clark. Ergo, people noticed other college basketball players doing certain things, and that is what got them the attention that Caitlin, because of Caitlin Clark. And Juju Watkins was a great benefactor a beneficiary of that attention. So people say, oh, shoot, there's this girl at USC was averaging 27, 28 a game. She's a freshman. Oh, damn, we need to check her out. And they did. And you see, she's a baller. But with all that said, she still wasn't on that level of Caitlin Clark attention. She's not having her every move judged, graded, viewed, analyzed and all that stuff. She's not having her hand motions judged on a court. She's not being told that she's X, Y, Z because she did something on a court or she had a temper tantrum on a court or whatever. There were some things that Caitlin Clark did at Iowa that I didn't too much care for. I thought the thing on the court, I think, was that uh, when she got when she basically ran into a fan and acted like she got hit by a shotgun, I thought that was very, very ultra dramatic uh, and honestly her own fault. <laughs> Because she ran to the fan. The fan didn't run into her. Um, but again, she took heat for that from some people. How do you handle that type of heat? You you ignore it in large part. You have to you have to filter this crap out. So she's offering herself to USC to Juju Watkins. She's saying, call me for anything. And that's the type of person she is, and that's the type of people that these individuals in the WNBA should have been. So, for example, this is the type of crap that she got when she came into the league. And this doesn't even include the Cheryl Swoops comments of she's 25, six years of of, of college COVID year. Um, She's shooting 40 shots a game. Like the, the nonstop, oh, she's a bully. Like this is being said by a former WNBA player, Hall of Famer, and someone that Caitlin Clark looked up to. So these are the other things that she had to deal with coming into the league. Rather than being welcome and saying, man, come in here. We would love, we can't wait to have you play in our league. Ball out. You have attention. Bring it to all of us. We appreciate it. We appreciate your skill. Nah, nah, nah. We got hatred. We got hatred. So here we go. This is just. A, a, a random bunch of things that were said about her that to me are just distasteful. And, and it's just another example of what happens within the WNBA. Here we go. We got this one here. Reality is coming. You look superhuman playing against some 18 year olds, but you're going to come play with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. That was Diana Taurasi. Thank you, Diana. Much appreciated your comments. Yeah, I think she actually had a better rookie year than you did. Heck, I think her rookie year might have been better than every season you've ever had in your career. Shoot, wow. But that's the welcome you get. Okay, let's take a look at another one. 
Here, this is what Caitlin Clark said about Angel Reese. She said she should never be criticized for what she did. I'm just one of the, one that competes, and she competed. I'm a big fan of hers. That's what you get from Caitlin Clark. You never had her saying negative stuff about any player she played against. She was always positive about them, wherein they were negative about her. Here we go, another one. This is Charles Barkley. They could not have f this Caitlin Clark thing up any worse if they tried. Remember, Charles Barkley is a big supporter of Caitlin Clark and saying, just ride the wave. Y'all just messing y'all money up. Y'all hating on this girl. This is what Charles Barkley said. And of course, because he was he said this, he was labeled a misogynist, a sexist, all the different ists you can think of. So yeah, that's the next one. Here's Angel Reese. The reason why we're watching women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too. Oh, this self-absorbed broad is unbelievable. Yeah, it's because of me, too. Again, this is against Caitlin Clark. This is hating on Caitlin Clark. Here we go. Another one right here. Uh, where did it go? Uh, I had it here. Where did it go? Uh, okay, here we go. This is it right here. When Caitlin Clark broke the record for assists for a season, People flash back to this tweet that had, was posted by none other than DJ Dan Carrington um, trying to mock her and, and you know message Alyssa and message Alyssa Thomas. Caitlin might lead the league in assists this year. She did. She broke the record. And Alyssa Thomas, don't play with me, nay. And Cheryl Swoops is laughing. So funny. More of Cheryl Swoops' adulation and love and appreciation. These are the types of things that have been said about her. They're just all mocking. Here we go. Angel Reese, finding out teams put teams hotel, pull with a camera as we get off the bus and put it in my teammate's face and harass her is nasty work. This is really is out of control and needs to stop. This was after Kennedy Carter forearm shivered Caitlin Clark in the back on the dead ball. Getting harassed at our hotel, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Isabel Harrison is here. Wow, thank God for security. My teammate being harassed at our hotels in St. Clinton. How the tables have turned and Isabel Harrison is talking about the Chicago Sky fans harassing her. Ain't that something? It's interesting how it's changed. We all know that that what was probably a TMZ paparazzi. Are you kidding? Yeah, they were. They claimed he was dropping all types of slurs. Sure, it doesn't even sound remotely believable that everyone has a camera and yet no one recorded this man with all his slurring that they claim he was doing. When really he was a paparazzi person, probably from TMZ, and would have sold whatever it was to TMZ. Here's Brittany Griner. It's different when you come from college to the pros. You're gonna go up against grown women. This is how they feed their families. This is not just for the love of the game. This is their livelihood. It's one after the other after the other it's non-stop here we go this is dawn staley remember she's part of the crew that kept caitlin clark off the olympic team if we had to do it all over again she would be in really high consideration of making the olympic team because she's playing head and shoulders above a lot of people newsflash dawn she was playing head and shoulders above all those people before the break before when you made the decision she was playing heads and shoulders above that after but she was already out playing all of them when you made your decision. In fact, you were the same person that said that Angel Reese, because of her double doubles, was the rookie of the year about 25 games in. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. And then, okay, this is the the, the, the last one I'll use. A Angel Wilson, <clears throat> it's this is this, it is really because you can be top notch at what you are as a black woman, but yet maybe that's something people don't want to see. They don't want to see this marketable, so it doesn't matter how hard I work. It doesn't matter what we do as black women. We're still going to be swept underneath the rug. That's why it boils my blood when people say it's not about race because it is. This is her saying that Caitlin Clark is getting the love she gets because she's white. This is her saying that same Paige Beckers and, and Kelsey Plum thing, you're only here because you're white. Not because you're a ball player, but because you're white. So this, these are just the comments that Caitlin Clark had to deal with and the attitudes that she's had to deal with her entire entire season as a rookie like you can't even it, it's crazy it's absolutely crazy and there's so many more but it just shows you the type of bullshit 
that Caitlyn's had to hand, deal with, live with, and, 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 and ignore. But yet when she's called upon, she answers the phone. So I say salute to you, Caitlin Clark. You're better than them. You're not just better than them as basketball, as a basketball player. You're a better person. Because at the end of the day, you are you care about the future of the women's basketball game. You care about the future of women's college basketball. You care about the future of the WNBA and all that stuff. They care about themselves. They don't see anything beyond themselves. They wear glasses like this. This is what they care about. They don't care about the big picture. Imagine if, uh, if God, imagine if, if, if people hadn't just accepted the fact that MJ, Michael Jordan was better. Where would the league be right now? That Larry Bird was actually a great basketball player. Where would the league be right now? That Magic was actually a great basketball Like, where would the league be today if it wasn't for these three guys in the 80s? It's just sad. It's sad to me. But this is an example, and it shows what a gracious human being Caitlin Clark is. It just shows. It's it, she's so she's so beloved that people will go watch her play golf. They'd probably go watch her play ping pong. And, and she's just living her life, man. But I, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments from Lindsey Gottlieb, obviously from USC, and, and how Caitlin Clark has been so gracious to, the, to her, giving them a phone number, call me anytime. And then, of course, on top of that, the stuff that Caitlin Clark's had to deal with all year. Can you imagine if the people who did all this and said all these things about Caitlin Clark didn't say them and instead of saying, we can't wait to have you on our team, we, in our league, we cannot wait, we want to compete with you, we know you're a badass, bring it. Instead, it's diminish, 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 diminish. But that's how the WNBA rolls. It's a bunch of old bitter Bettys who want to protect an old guard and hate the idea of the Lily White girl from Iowa being better than them. That's all I got. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to pound that like button. Ring that bell. Also, jump on over to Rudy's Rant on YouTube and subscribe there. Subscribe to our channel here. Come on now, the podcast. Thank you again for being with us. Facts over feelings. Come on now.